Sorget, and welcome. Today we're going to be taking a look at a special verse. I know it's Resurrection Sunday, so happy Resurrection Sunday for to all of you, to the one person who's actually watching. Uh, we're going to be looking at Romans 6, 4, not because it's a actually part of the normal reading of today. I actually haven't looked at that, <laughs> but because I think this is a very topical sentence, sentence, topical verse considering what today is. Here is our Latin, everything that we are looking for today. Let's go ahead and get started. Consepulti enim sumus cum illo per baptismum in mortem ut, quomodos rexit Christus a mortuis per gruborium patris, ita et nos in novitate vitae ambula, ambulemus. E is very important right there. So, very first word is actually an adjective in form. We have that I right there, which tells us that this is going to be a either genitive singular or nominative plural masculine word, with enum immediately after it, and sumus, which is a verb form, so genitive does not make sense, it must be masculine plural nominative. Since we have sumus, we could treat this as a perfect passive periphrastic, however normally we would expect sumus to appear before that. but. This is also the very first word of the verse, so it might be intended for that specific meaning to be the most emphatic of the meaning found there. I don't know. I, I would normally go with this just being an adjective and this being a connecting verb. But let's let's move on. It is, at the very least, as an adjective, going to be a perfect passive and either a participle or indicative. And it means buried together, buried with. As a participle, it would be having been buried with. As indicative, since sumus is first person plural present, active indicative, it would be we are buried with. As a indicative, so these two working together paraphrastically, this would be we have been buried. So the other option would just be first, plural, all of that. Enum, enum just means for. Okay, and that's going to move over here to the beginning of our translation. I'm going to go ahead and treat this, as I said, as the adjective with connecting verb, or a coordinating, whatever it is. Those are two options right there. Cum, prepositional phrase right there. This one always takes the ablative in its object, which we find with illo. Per is another preposition. So this phrase has to end right here. Singular, and this one is going to be masculine. It could technically be neuter, but understanding, since I already understand the greater context of what's going on in this verse, masculine is the correct option. So buried with for, we are buried with, we have been buried with, no need to translate that, that one, it's referring to someone farther away, per, per is going to take the accusative, baptismum in, new prepositional phrase, so we have to close this one off, um right there confirms for us that it is accusative, singular, and when I looked up the gender of this word, it is both masculine and neuter, so there's a baptismus and there's a baptismum, so I'm just going to have to write both, masculine or neuter, <laughs> through baptism, in plus the accusative or the ablative, mortem there is accusative, so we know that one, this time with accusative we know that this is going to be motion into, motion onto, this is singular and feminine. Ut starts a new clause, so we have to close that one off there. Into death. Ut could be introducing either a result clause or a purpose clause. Here we'll need to take a look at the rest of the context to be sure. Quomodo, 
Komodo is actually an interesting word. It's a combination of form of qui and modus. And it means just as or in what manner or way. Surexit. IT is going to be our third person singular ending on this verb. That X should immediately be a warning to us that this is the perfect stem. And it is, of course, active and indicative. But who is doing surexit? Why Christus right there with that US nominative, singular, and masculine. I'm going to swap the positions of the translation, these two, so it's correct form, at least in English. Christ rose. So far, so good. Ah, prepositional phrase there. This t always takes the ablative. You find with is right there. Per is a new prepositional phrase. So we have to close this one off. Sing, nope, plural. And feminine, right? Or to, um, I think this one is actually going to be neutered. Except as an adjective, could be any of the three again with this form. Now, that means that we don't know, which then means that we should default to masculine since masculine is generic. From dead, understanding that that means plural. Per gloriam patris, per takes the accusative. Gloriam is where this prepositional phrase ends, and that's singular and feminine, because of that M right there. Through glory, patris, that IS in this case is on a third declension noun, meaning genitive, singular, masculine, of father, ita, thus, et, et could be and or also. We'll need to translate the rest of this sentence to see which one makes sense. And the Greek version of this one ended up translating that chi initially as and, and then went to took a look at the, the whole verse and said, no, nah, also makes more sense. So that's probably going to be also like the Greek. Nos, nos is either nominative plural or accusative plural of nos, <laughs> the word for we, the emphatic word for we. So we take a look ahead. Mus, mus tells us that nos is going to be nominative. We, emphatic, in, prepositional phrase, noetate. That's got the correct ending to be the ablative within. Wetai is not right for that. So prepositional phrase ends right there. Feminine, yes. Noetas, ASs are almost always feminine. In, Newness, AE, that could be nominative plural, it could be genitive singular, it could be dative singular. We already have our subject for lemos, so nominative plural doesn't make sense. Dative plural doesn't make sense either. Datives don't go with ambulo. Instead, genitive owning this prepositional phrase is the most likely. Genitive singular and feminine of life. This E in ambulo tells us that this is going to be subjunctive because this is a first conjugation verb, so we would normally expect ambulamus. So we have first person plural, because of the present stem, it is active, and with that E it is subjunctive, which is exactly, gosh, learn how to spell, exactly what we'd expect with an ut clause. So now we just need to figure out how do we translate this boot? Let's take a look at the whole thing together and then try it as a relative and then try it as a purpose. Four, we were buried, we have been buried, we are buried with that one through baptism into death with the result that we walk in newness of life because of all of this. Or four, we have been buried with that one through baptism into death in order that we 
walk in newness of life through all of this, because of all of this. So I think that the preference clause makes the most sense. You could argue that because we have quomodo in there as an adverb, that it supports the idea of a result clause. However, I think that the way that that normally works is if you're going to have a, a adverb, a, a quantitative thing to indicate a result clause, it's normally going to be in this clause of the result clause. But uh, those, those rules are generally pretty loose. And even then, quomodo isn't something like Tom. For a result clause, if we're going to have a indicating adverb, we expect something that gives us a size, a distance, a duration. Komodo is, is giving us away, when it's kind of like it, but I don't think it's efficient to argue for a result clause. So I'm going to treat it as purpose, and you, you can disagree with me if you'd like. That's within your prerogative. Okay, last thing. Just as Christ rose from dead through glory of Father, thus also we walk in newness of life. Or, just as Christ rose from dead through glory of Father, thus and thus we in newness of life walk. Also makes more sense. Just like the Greek. And there we have it. Now from the beginning. For we are, or we have been buried with that one. Who's that one? Christ is that one. Through baptism into death. Whose death? His death again. In order that just as Christ rose from dead through glory of Father, thus also we walk in newness of life. There we have it. So the, the connection that this verse has to today is right there in mortum, mortem, and so to exit. Christ died Friday in the grave through until today. He was raised by the Father. Now, in the Greek, we've got a passive instead of an active, but that's, that's the interesting thing about a lot of the, the passages about Christ is when, when he does something... Uh, I would give you examples if I could remember specifics, but uh, there's different locations throughout the New Testament where a deed is spoken of as Christ doing it, and then in a different place, a different book where it talks about the same, probably the same event, talks about a different person of the Trinity doing it. So while the Greek does have the passive here, active is also perfectly fine, as, at least as far as I understand from the rest of the passages like this. But anyway, Christ was raised, raises himself from the dead through the glory of the Father. Why does he do that? So that we may walk in newness of life. Now, the great thing about the Greek is the word that it has, in, where uh, Latin has noetate here, it, it's, it's got a special connotation with it. It means extraordinary or unusual. So when we walk in newness of life because of Christ's death, it's not the same life that we had before. We are regenerated through baptism into Christ's death himself. It, itself. So, that's a connection for me. I love this verse. Definitely something worth committing to memory. I hope taking a look at this has been helpful for you. And I hope that you have a very good day.